Oxidation of alcohols, a very important reaction in this higher chemistry course. Well, I guess we have to begin with the question, what is oxidation? What does it actually mean? As the word implies, it sometimes involves oxygen. If, for example, alcohol is left exposed to the air for a long time, a number of days, for example, it will slowly change. Wine left exposed to the atmosphere turns to vinegar and has been oxidized. And so, therefore, one definition of oxidation is when something reacts with oxygen. It's when something gains oxygen. When the molecule you started with has more oxygen in it at the end than it has at the start. That's one possible definition. You might recall from your standard grade days, oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons. We're not concerned with the reduction here just now. Oxidation is loss of electrons. The problem with these reactions is it's not very obvious that electrons are being lost. But that's probably the most important definition of them all. And then thirdly, the opposite of this, instead of reacts with oxygen, instead of gains oxygen, it could be loses hydrogen. If the molecule ends up with less hydrogen than it started with, then that can sometimes be classified as oxidation. So here's a, a complication. Which of these three definitions do we choose? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on what's most appropriate. We just have to cross this bridge when we come to it. The next question we have to ask is, how? How do we oxidize alcohols? Well, one possibility, as I implied, was to leave them exposed to the atmosphere. But we, we can't do that uh, unless if we're in a hurry, because obviously it would take far too long. If we're looking at an industrial process, then that's definitely out of the question. Time is money. So how can we oxidise something rapidly? Well, we need to use chemicals called oxidising agents. And as the name implies, these are agents, substances, which oxidise things. The question now is, can we think of an oxidising agent? Well, the two oxidising agents which you must be familiar with here are acidified permanganate. Permanganate. Acidified permanganate. What is that? Well, it's the permanganate ion. There it's there. Manganese and oxygen. One negative charge. Permanganate, which has been mixed with acid. This is like a, a chemical cocktail, this combination of H plus and permanganate has the ability to oxidize a powerful chemical and will certainly oxidize alcohols. You'll find in the data book on page 11 the chemistry of acidified permanganate. It's down here near the bottom of the table. It tells us down here that when you have permanganate, and you have acid, then it's very hungry for electrons. This will soak up electrons. Well, of course, if this is gaining electrons, something else must be losing electrons. In other words, that something else must be being oxidized. So, when this gains electrons, it's at the cost of something else losing electrons. Well, what's interesting is that when this I get it right myself. When this ion, oh dear, tap, tap, tap. When this ion gains electrons, it undergoes a colour change. And here's why. It undergoes a colour change because when we have this form, it's purple, very strong purple colour. But when it gains electrons, it becomes colourless. I've got some acidified permanganate here. It's got a very distinct purple colour. If this was to lose its colour, this must have gained electrons, therefore something else has lost electrons, therefore something else has been oxidised. A related substance is acidified dichromate. You'll find acidified dichromate 
also on the bottom of the table on page 11 of the data book. Acidified dichromate. You must get to know these substances. You must know that the permanganate is purple and the dichromate, and remember it's in the data book, so if you're struggling to remember it, you can look at the book. The dichromate is orange. As the name implies, it's also acidified. Without the acid, it won't work. You have to add acid for this to work. And the reason is that the hydrogen ions, which the acid supplies, play a crucial part in this reaction. These orange ions, in the presence of acid, again, are greedy for electrons. They'll steal electrons from a great many substances. If this is gaining electrons, something else must be losing electrons, that something else must be being oxidized. It could be an alcohol. The question is, what does this turn into? According to the data book, we end up with chromium 3 plus ions and water. Is there a color change this time? Yes, there is. But it's not purple to colorless, it's orange to green. You have to remember these colour changes. If you see this orange colour turning green, it must be that this has gained electrons, and this can only gain electrons if something else has lost them, if something else has been oxidised. <coughs> I mean. So there we have the two oxidising agents which you will come across a great deal in this topic. Now, let's move on to number three and oxidize alcohols. Let's bring these oxidizing agents into contact with some alcohols. Now, I have alcohols in these beakers, but we have three different alcohols. How is that possible? Because when it comes to alcohols, they fall into three types. We have primary, secondary and tertiary alcohol. Primary, secondary and tertiary. What distinguishes those? Well, the answer is it's the position of the hydroxyl group. In a primary alcohol, the hydroxyl group is on the end of the chain. And being in that position gives a certain character. If the same hydroxyl group is not on the end of the chain, then it sometimes can behave slightly differently. And tertiary, well tertiary is when the hydroxyl group is opposite a branch. Why should it matter? Does it really make any difference where the hydroxyl group is? Well the answer is this. In this position, there are two neighbouring hydrogen atoms. This makes these behave in a particular way. This hydroxyl group is attached to a carbon which has still got one hydrogen attached. But in this case, this carbon atom has no hydrogen atoms attached. So therefore, we have these three different types of alcohol. So finally, what happens when we bring these alcohols into contact with our oxidizing agents? Well, let's find out. Here is a primary alcohol. Here is our acidified permanganate. When the primary alcohol is added to acidified permanganate, aha, it's lost its colour. Why has that happened? What has happened is the permanganate has gained electrons, therefore the alcohol must have lost electrons, therefore the alcohol has been oxidised. So what we can see is that this primary alcohol, or a primary alcohol, can be oxidized. I've well, not answered the question what does it turn into, but it has been oxidized. Let's confirm that. Let me do the same reaction with the other oxidizing agent, the acidified dichromate. What happens with this one? There, colour change. It's gone green. So in both cases, the primary alcohol has been oxidized. What about a secondary alcohol? Let's see if this does anything. Secondary alcohol 
acidified permanganate. There. It can also be oxidized. If this is gaining electrons, this is losing electrons, this is being oxidized. Let's just reinforce that using the other oxidizing agent, the acidified dichromate. Does this one turn green? Yes, it does. So, we've confirmed that you can oxidize a secondary alcohol. This can be oxidized, this can be oxidized. Finally, let's test out a tertiary alcohol. Tertiary alcohol, acidified permanganate, nothing happening. Why is that? If this is staying purple, it's because it's not gaining electrons. And why is it not gaining electrons? Because the alcohol is not losing electrons. And if, it's not, if this is not losing electrons, the alcohol is not being oxidized. And again, just to reinforce that, if you use the other oxidizing agent, the acidified dichromate, the same story. No change, no reaction, nothing is happening. So we can see that a tertiary alcohol is not oxidized. Does it work? I wonder why. Two questions. Why is this not being oxidized? And these are. And secondly, if they are being oxidized, what are they turning into? The action in these molecules isn't random. The action takes place right there, where the functional group is. Organic chemistry are like that. You target where things are happening. Now, what we need to do here to explain this is to use one of our other definitions. You remember we said that oxidation can be losing hydrogen. There were three definitions. And we did say early on that loss of hydrogen was one definition. You can use this definition to explain what's happened. Which hydrogens? It's the hydrogen on the hydroxyl group because that's where the character of the molecule is and one of its neighbouring hydrogens have been lost. We lose two hydrogens. And the consequence of losing these two hydrogens, let's just do that, lose two hydrogens, is that the molecule has to adapt. It changes. It rearranges itself to form a structure like that. This molecule is this alcohol which has lost its hydrogens. It's no longer an alcohol, it's an aldehyde. How do you know it's an aldehyde? It has this characteristic appearance. What about this one? Similar story. If we use the definition of losing hydrogen, then which hydrogen will we lose? Those two. Not any old random hydrogens, but the one on the functional group and the neighbouring hydrogen. If we take these hydrogens off, there they go. What are they left with? The molecule has to rearrange itself to produce this shape. You can see these are similar. They have a, they have a, a, a similar appearance. But because this is in the middle of the molecule, it's defined as a ketone. We'll see more about aldehydes and ketones later. So why is the tertiary alcohol not oxidized? Well, it simply cannot lose two hydrogens. Yes, it has one hydrogen here, but there's no more neighbouring hydrogen. It cannot undergo the change that these have undergone. So when it comes to tertiary alcohol, no reaction.